Hey guys, what's happening? So the CR10 Max is back. Um, got this back about a week ago, and he said that he did try to do some updates or something again on the on the Sonic Pad, and uh, something didn't go right, broke. So I don't know if I have to re-image it or what the deal is. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna plug this in and see what's what's happening. I know this wasn't actually. I had to kind of customize the config a little bit because they didn't actually have this actual printer in the uh, uh, in the configuration, so I had to go back and modify the config, the pram, the bit, everything was the same, like a CR10 Pro, uh, I think it was like Pro version 2, because it's had it's a, this actually has a BL Touch on it, down here, and, but the, the unique thing is, is the motherboard. Uh, it's actually an 8-bit board, but it has trinamic drivers on it. I made their videos about this printer, but this is a really unique board that's really hard to find. Like, extremely hard to find and expensive. They only made it for a very... It's only on these Pro printers. So it was right before they went from 8-bit to 32-bit. It was like the highest end 8-bit board they actually made for Creality. Um, Alright, so i got to figure out what's up with this. Get it working again. Sorry, we're going to the mess here. Get some prints, too. Design a new uh, Core XY system for a uh, custom printer I'm building here. But um, if you're not familiar with the Sonic Pad, it's a um, basically like a Creality's answer to a Raspberry Pi. So during the shortage, all these companies came out with their own clipper solutions, you know, running different ARM processors, um, etc. Big Tree Tech came out with one, Creality came out with one. I'm going to plug this in. I don't know what's going to happen with this thing. Alright. Okay. Sonic Pad. I may I'll design a mount for this thing to get on the printer. I didn't really like how it was free floating. I just you know you could you could kick the cable, screw the cable up. And like I said, that that motherboard is so hard to find. And what kind of sucks is it has that ribbon cable, right? Is that I would have to completely rewire the whole printer, you know, if I was gonna remove that board and that and that ribbon cable off there. So I mean that would definitely be a headache. So if you're not familiar with this stuff, it runs Linux and uh, runs Clipper. But I've never actually opened this up to see what kind of CPU is in there. Processor. Ah, oh, it's like it's a brand new system. Okay. Okay, next step. Okay, so there might not be anything wrong with the printer. Okay, New York. Alright, so I'm going to go through the setup again. And I'll go back to the critical part where it's that's specific to that actual printer. Because I already know the motherboard on it. It's I think it's the CR10 Pro version 2 um, that's equipped the same motherboard. Because I've actually worked on several of those, um, of these CR10 Pros. You know, because if, they ha if you see that ribbon cable on the gantry, then you know it's one of those uh, weird motherboards. Well, one thing I'm not specific about, and... Um, is I don't know if this is actually the host name, but if it's the host name, then that's actually how you would, um, I'm just going to call it CR10. Um, that's how you would actually log in from a web browser. Um, you know, make it caps. See? I know, Linux is case sensitive. Um, ah, oh, fingers. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, I want to do a. As far as I know, they're not going to have. Unless they actually added new models to this thing. So it's not that other models. Let's see a 10 series. They might or might not have the. Remember what you said? You're looking for one with the ribbon cable. So I know the CR10 Pro, this is the closest one I saw before, the Pro version 2. I also added the Max in here. Okay, I guess there's not that. So, the CR10 version Pro 2 is Z Amiga. That's the actual processor. So, 
you know that's actually an 8-bit board. So if it was on like an STM32 Micro, that's 32-bit. Um, there's they use different ARM processors, um, but the Amiga 2560 that's an 8-bit board. So like I said, it's an 8-bit board, but it runs good Trinamic drivers. So it was a really odd transition in there. So what I do is I use this one, then I go back and adjust it. But so everything's exactly the same. It's just a bigger bed. So once I've had this configuration on there. Then I just go back in the clipper, clipper configuration and expand the bed. USB communication, yes. Okay. Arg. Um. All right, I have to pick this big printer up and bring it over here. Anyways, I have it set up. So I'm gonna see if I can design a mount or something for it, or find a mount. That way, it's permanently on the machine. Um. So the USB cable going through here. Really, I just want to get the setup going. That way, uh, once I get this thing set up, then I can do some updates. But the firmware is already... Uh, it's interesting that it's going to try to flash the firmware, though. Um, I don't know if that USB cable works, but... Um, as far as I can remember, this was a few months ago when I did it. It was able to flash the firmware. I didn't have to even touch it, which is cool. I didn't have to bust out my, any of my tools to flash it. Um, God, it's been a while since I flashed an 8-bit board. Okay, flash successfully. Cool. So the firmware is, doesn't... It, it's not like Marlin, right? Marlin actually... The, the firmware is actually... The parameters of the, of the bed and the printer are built into the firmware, whereas Clipper is not. The firmware and the configuration are two different things, which is great. That's why it makes Clipper so great. Yes, because for many years, I... Um, you know, I had to custom make Marlin firmware. Anytime I make a change or when I was screwing on a printer, I had to recompile a Marlin, then flash it, so it was a total headache. This is way more efficient. Okay. The throat cooling fan is da da da. Yep. You can see the fan spinning. Like I said, it's gotta go through and make sure the yeah, I can see it spinning. For what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the head. We're basically testing the cooling fans. Alright. Alright, it's going to do its thing. So this actually does have a BL touch. So, the version 1 of the Sierra 10 Pro actually had an inductive probe. Not a capacitive probe, but an inductive probe. Um, whereas the version 2 had the BL Touch. Because I've actually messed with version 1s and they were, uh, they were actually even more a headache. <laughs> Alright, so I'm doing the calibration now. I don't really know if that's... Okay, right now it's doing G28. You can see, you can see that I haven't, I haven't messed with the parameters yet. I'm going to go, once I get Clipper installed, I'm going to go back and do this, but it's forcing me to go through all these dummy screens. Um, so it, since it's set up as a CR10, uh, see, it probably just hit the, the, the thing too. It's not the full bed size. A CR10 is like 300 by 300. See that right there? So instead of going all the way to the very edge, it, it went. So once this is installed and it's happy, I go back in the configuration and I change it. All right, all about the configuration. And uh, I... Don't know if I can... Okay, it looks like your basic clipper screen. I mean, a modified version of clipper screen. Alright, um... I'm gonna log in, to see if there's any updates. I wonder if we... Because it, it looked like it was factory defaulted. Um... Let's see, advanced option. System upgrade, there we go. Is the latest version okay? So, all right. So I'm gonna go back into the. I can't do it from here. I don't think it's gonna be easier for me to just log into the web browser. So this is earlier when I think the host name. Um, I know with Clipper, it's it, you log in with the host name. All right. So under the uh, printer configuration files here, I'm really just gonna make, modify the parameters of the uh, bed here. That's it, really. Maybe some of the BL touch stuff. This looks, uh, wow. Um, 
this look, okay, this is not your typical standard clipper setup, but I gotta figure out what they did here. Um, okay, X stepper here. This should be the max. Somewhere here, see the max position right here, 300. So I know this thing is 400. So 470. So maybe I'll do about uh, uh, to so I don't hit the bed clips. Maybe I'll just do about uh, remove 10 from each side. So about 460 by 460. All right, so I don't have this thing fully dialed in yet, but um, before I did, when I did a bed mesh, it was based on the uh, CR10, the 300 by 300 bed. I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna recalibrate here. Like I said, this is different than I'm used to dealing with, but um, I mean they're basically the same. All right, so that's still in the wrong position. Why well, didn't uh, G28 should be more towards the center? I mean, obviously, it's going to a, according to a 300 by 300 bed. Right, so I forgot the mesh max. So that's actually going to determine how far it goes. And the actual uh, save Z right here. So I changed it to 230 by 230. All right, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. I could maybe go a little bit further back on Y, but that's, that's pretty straight. The main thing is because the BL touches off to one side, when you're meshing, you can't go all the very edge, you know? It depends on how far you can get over here. You want to go as far as you can, but because the BL touches on this side, you, you lose travel, not only X side, this side, but this side. Sometimes, it depends on the printer. All right, so you know when you don't have it right, so I have to take off some, because it, what's funny, it will start the mesh cycle, but then when it gets to an air, it knows it can't go any further, that's when you get the air. So I have to take away. I have to take away some of the the max travel. All right, let's try it again. See now, I brought it back ten um, because I didn't want it to hit the bed clip. All right, getting this successful now on the X. I don't know what. I mean, I could probably go like another ten on it earlier. So those are really just the main thing. It's like uh, you know, changing the bed size. The homing position and um, the bed mesh, but at least for this printer, other printers you wouldn't have to do that for if they're in the list. I mean, they have a perfect configuration on there. I think if I, what I can do is, I'm going to increase the bed 10 mil because I know it can go further. Um, I'm going to increase it 10, and then allow the mesh to go 10 more over because I want it to be a little bit more even with the other side.